they survived, but no one here has been spared the anguish. Their stories are excruciating to hear, let alone live through. I lost my mother and brother-in-law. I had to carry his body from the eighth floor and my mother was trapped on the first floor. We took their bodies out with our bare hands because rescue teams could not reach us the first day. It was pouring rain. God turned this place into a hell that day. We followed two clinical psychologists with the Turkish Red Crescent into this camp for displaced people. They listen, hold hands, offer pats on the back and play games with children. Sometimes just offering a blanket or a cup of coffee is comfort enough in that moment. If they don't have their secure shelters, if they don't feel themselves secure, so it will like so socially, it will affect them in, soci in a social behavior, I mean in, in a social way. You, you, we could have so many multiple uh, psychological problems like depression, major depression, PTSD, and some uh, personality disorders even. The psychologists say in the upheaval of the earthquake's aftermath, children are particularly vulnerable. Our youngest daughter is going through a difficult time. She was with her grandmother when she died. She went crazy being outside in the rain alone while we tried to reach her. We're trying to heal ourselves. God willing, we will. The president of the Turkish Red Crescent says its ability to provide mental health services to survivors is, quote, humble, considering the enormous need required in the coming weeks, months and years. And that's why sustained international aid is essential. People repeatedly say they're feeling hopeless and helpless. But over time, experts say their collective trauma can also lead to a communal healing. Natasha Ganem, Al Jazeera, Antakya, Turkey.